All right, welcome back to the DTV uh, No Name, the podcast with no name. Was that what? Podcast, yeah, yeah, podcast with so, yeah. no name. Congratulations, you got past the title sequence. <laughs> yeah. All right. He remembered that much. I did. It's hard to remember anything else. All right, now, so today's topic is... You're not going to introduce Ironically us? enough, about introducing everybody at this table before we get into the topic. Uh, Merrick, Merrick Combs is here with us today. Then we got uh, Mr. Senior Jack Velasic. And over here we have Tyler Scroggins. And today we're going to be talking about video games, except part two, without the boomers. Part two, Electric Boogaloo. Part two, Electric Boogaloo. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So first question that I personally have, just trying to get the conversation rolling here. um, What's your guys' personal favorites? Like if you had to pick a game off the top of your head, what's a game that you play the most? Uh, okay, I'll start. Um, at currently, the game that I play the most, Final Fantasy fourteen, just because it, it's like a it, MMO, so top down, five hundred button sort of thing. Got like thirty people in call. Um, I, I mainly just play it because it's like a subscription thing, and I'm always on call with my friends. I don't know if I'd say it's my favorite, but it's definitely the one I'm playing the most right now. Yeah, I, is that a grindy game? Y- you can make it a grindy game, but like. Because there's, like, a bunch of different classes, so you could level them all up, or you could just stick with the one and get leveled up through the story and just have fun that way. Mm -hmm. I'd I'd say right now uh, probably Destiny 2. Um, I really love the build craft uh, on, you know, you have all these weapons that do tons of different things, and you have all these armors that do tons of different things, and you mix them together and you get something cool. Yeah, yeah. My girlfriend has been trying to get me in the Destiny 2, and I'm like, ah, this is a game I'm only playing with my friends, <laughs> never by myself. But it is fun. Uh, my personal favorite right now, I'm going to be honest, I've been playing it for too long, is um, Guilty Gear Strive. Uh, I've had it for a while, but I've actually been playing it more recently, and I've been having so much fun with it. It is like, a very fun yeah, game. Yeah, like, it's like... Uh, Compared to Dragon Ball Fighters, I feel like that's definitely one of the more harder fighting games to get into because its combat system is so intense and it's so complicated. But with Guilty Gear, it's kind of like simple enough to where everybody can kind of understand the basics of it. And I feel like the characters are very fun and like everybody's designed in a way that makes the game interesting to play. Uh, personally, I have been playing... Way too much TF2 recently. Hmm, I wonder why. Uh, I enjoyed the high-octane FPS thing. You know, nine unique classes with their own distinct personalities after nine years of development. Uh, I've also been playing a lot of Minecraft because I'm lame like that. Uh, my, my own, mainly modded because, you know, my friends don't never want to play with me. Yeah, we will eventually. Eventually. <laughs> you say that all the time. Eventually. Uh, I'd love to if my computer wasn't garbage. You know, that's true. But install mods. That's why my computer's garbage. That's why <laughs> that makes play. it worse. <laughs> mods that make their game run better. Yeah, sure. Once those exist, they do. They do. Really? Yeah. It's called what, uh, do they what is it? There's there's a mod pack called Fabulously Optimized. Yeah. It's, it has like fifty mods mm-hmm. in it that all like improve the game, and literally it like triples your frame rate. It can quite literally make Minecraft runnable on like a potato, even in Java. <laughs> like literally, doing running on a pregnancy test. Yes. I go from like 500 frames to like 1,200. Can you add mods on top of that? Yes. Yeah. Well, it's like it depend- works with the others. Yeah. Like, well, depends on what loader and whatnot, but usually there are performance mods everywhere. Just you have to know where to look. Uh, and then a third one would be Guilty Gear. That is really fun. Yeah. All right. Uh, off that topic, um, do you guys like any genres in particular that you stick to more? Because I know that when I was younger, it's changed for me quite a bit, but when I was younger, I used to be super into horror games because for some reason my family like exposed me to horror and horror movies when I was like super young. So when I was uh, like eight or nine, I just loved playing Resident Evil. Um, that was probably my biggest one for me. And then Silent Hill, stuff like that, like little indie stuff. See, the thing with that, y- you pose the question, and I'm immediately like, oh, yeah, this. No, no, wait, this. I, it's really just like whatever I can find at the time. I don't stick to one, really. That, that is, like, blowing my mind, kind of. Honestly, yeah, yeah. It's like I, I hop between, like, five different games a day because my brain is just like, all right, I'm bored. 15 minutes later, time ADHD to play this brain. game. Yeah. More like Asperger's brain, but yeah. Actually, that's a question that uh, 
I feel like would be a good one to ask. Do you guys like stick to one game, or do you find like you get like bored easily and kind of like hop between different things to do throughout the day? Like if you go from one game to another, because usually if I'm like if I have one goal in mind, like I can play that game for a long time, like with Overwatch or with Guilty Gear. But um, if I'm like just kind of like moseying around searching for something to kill time, then usually it's like hard for me to stay on one title. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Like if um like you're in call or something, you could be on the same game thirteen hours, not even realize. Feels like twenty minutes. Going twenty and zero against your friend Ryan because he's a <laughs> god tier and you're playing Chip, who is the lowest health pool in the entire game because you want to be a little so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be different and then just <laughs> dies. No diff. It's like, oh, you want health? Gone. But like, yeah, when I'm trying to just like kill time. I pop up DMC1, play it for three seconds, can't, hop over to Smash, play like three rounds, da da da. Like, you can't stick with one. Yeah. Play around TF2. I'd say with like friends, uh, I can play the same game for like hours, hours on end. And it, it doesn't really matter if you have people to talk to because you're not playing the game for the game. You're playing the with your friends for the moment. Um, for that funny Victory Royale chicken dinner winner winner thingy thonga. <laughs> yes. But as soon as, you know, you don't have friends and you're just playing a game by yourself. I think uh, once I'm done with that game and I'm bored of it, I'll just get off. You know, I, I won't go to a different game because I know there's not going to be a really another game that's going to be fun for that day. I'm really just going to keep bouncing around uh, on and not enjoying myself. I'll, I'll either try finding friends that are playing a game that I can join in with or just get off for the day. Having a level of self-control like that is what makes games really fun. Because if you stick with a game forever and you're like, I'm going to beat this, and you start hating it, and you're like, no, I'm going to get this. After you get that, it's like a bitter victory. You get it, you feel happy, you never want to touch the game again. Yeah. Well, to an extent, because I feel like, um, like I said with Guilty Gear, the, my love for that kind of started because I was kind of playing it on and off. But then, like, it kind of dawned on me that like, that was the one fighting game where Ryan wasn't winning against me every single time. And I kind of, like, put in more dedication to that than any other fighting game that I did in the past. Like, more hours to practice, like, trying different things. And eventually, I'm going to be honest, it's actually gotten really close between me and him. Fighting games are kind of a different beast, though. Because, like, you get better and better, and you're not... All it's not a goal that you can accomplish. It's one right. of those, like, It's like not like if you're playing and Overwatch and, oh, you get to this rank and you've accomplished whatever rank you want. Like, it's not quite that simple because you're constantly improving in games that are competitive, like fighting games. I think it's more of a burnout thing. Like, you play the exactly. game too much to where it's like, mm -hmm. I, I'm done for now, and then that's the problem with fighting games or games that are more repetitive where the fun aspect is the other player fighting against them or learning them or... <laughs> Yeah, because if you're extent. fighting alone, it gets real boring. But mm -hmm. being, like, like the friendship thing, you're fighting against someone, there's either a competitiveness, a funness, or, like, you're just messing around to kill time sort of thing. But it's because you're in company that the game can't really die out in your brain. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, all right, let's see. Would you s I actually like this question earlier. Would you guys say that playing video games has helped you meet new people? Or would you say that it's taken away your chances to meet others? I'd say it definitely can hurt your, um, like, like MMOs are the biggest killer of, like, socialness. Because you, you can say anything you want to a random voice in your head, like, through Discord or whatever. You can say anything to them, you're not going to meet them. And then as soon as you see a person in real life, you got to focus on what you're doing, what you're saying, what you look like. It, It's not just inflection and voice. It's everything so it, it kills no way like social awareness it kills your social awareness sometimes because mm -hmm. yeah. this this person that you're talking to you will never probably ever meet them so there's no risk almost of you know you can say or do whatever you want in the game and i feel like that um you're not really getting to know the person because they could be you know living a whole different life but at, exactly. and the same thing you know destiny 2 it's a clan thing you know so you do meet these other people's people uh, in these big communities and have fun with them, but, you know, you don't really know them. Double-edged sword sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. 
Because I have made, like, lots of what I'd call, like, close friends online. Like, uh, I met a dude in Nevada named Will by playing a Bleach mobile game on my phone. And I was talking with him in a chat, and we decided to make a Discord server for, like, a clan that we had. And I've been talking to Will for years. And uh, same with another friend that I have. I will be honest, I don't know his name, but uh, his username is Syndicate. And I've been playing Asu with him on and off, and I feel really close with him more than I probably should, to be honest. Like, uh, no, just, I feel like sometimes it depends. Because sometimes yeah. you can, like, build friendships, but usually if you're building them online, they don't last as long. Like, yeah. when I'm playing VR chat, I make friendships instantly, oh, yeah. but they normally last, like, a day or two, and then I you never could, talk to those people You could try again. talking to them the next day, and they're like, who are you? Exactly. Because they probably, like, if you're on a game like VR chat, they're having conversations all the time, so they probably talk to, like, ten people like you that night, and they won't be able to remember you as well. No? Nothing <laughs> yeah, I got nothing. nothing. Okay. All right. Um... Do you have more fun in games when you're being more competitive with your friends or when you're working together, like, cooperative-wise with, with your friends? You asked me that six years ago, I would have said, oh, I, I hate the competitiveness, I just want teamwork. Now, once I've gotten a taste for, like, a sort of rivalry, like, fighting Nate and fighters, fighting you and fighters a little bit, it's like, I could almost beat this dude, and there's just that level, like, it clicks in your brain, you're like, okay, going against someone is fun. Mm -hmm. Like, a rivalry is amazing in my mind i feel like i can connect um on both of those with friends i think it's better to um fight together but with just you know i like to fight people uh in competitive games and i feel like i almost get to almost know some of them on like how they work and you're like oh it's that guy he does this and he does that he uses this gun or uses this strat and you you get to learn a personality almost of this person you're fighting but with friends, you know, it's just you want to talk to them, I feel like, and you want to uh, fight together uh, to either beat this person or beat this other team. Yeah, it's like that same where, like, people who, like, fight, they, like, learn each other through playing a game together or something like that. I have a friend named Ryan back at home where we've been rivals in fighting games for years, and I can, like, at the click of a hat, or, like, same with him. He, like, we instantly know what the other one's going to do. So we have to keep on constantly changing the way we play because otherwise we'd just be able to predict everything that we do and it wouldn't be as fun because that's how long we fought each other and we know each other on that level now. But I do think that competitive games make, you know, are more fun for me in that aspect because it's like that constant self-improvement feel to where I want to get better at what I'm doing to like be able to play with my friends or to be able to beat some one of my friends in a game that like gives me the drive to keep on playing those games. Because if it's just a single player game, I'm going to be honest, I usually don't finish them. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I just like the drive that to just be the best that I can be in a lot of competitors. Like I'm pretty like I'm pretty decent at Overwatch. Like I've grinded the game enough to be at least high plat, low diamond in all my roles, which is pretty good. But it also is at the kind of the cost of you know me being able to play with you know Isaac over here. You know, Mr. Uh, was bronze five, now is silver five. Stuck in bronze and silver forever. <laughs> yeah, because. Never gold. Yeah, but honestly, I just I just love the competitive aspect of games. It's, it, it's just some unique challenge, like some guy that's trying to think that thinks he's better than me. I, improving him. Yeah, wrong. improving yeah. it. Yeah. But like what Jack said with compu uh, like teaming up and everything, that has given me like some of the most fun I've ever had is like. Uh, mm hmm. Uh, there, there's, like, Monster Hunter stories. It's, like, a, almost like Pokemon. We literally devised a full-blown strat to beat this one boss, and it was so fun just running at it and, like, getting everything correct. And, like, Final Fantasy XIV, they were... They mentioned something in the last one about, like, call-outs. That... There's a sense of teamwork that builds very well from, like, MMOs with raids and stuff to where there is just everyone and one person doing call-outs, and it, it's, like, a, a zone-in thing where it, it's just the biggest sense of trust. Like, you hear, okay, out, or uh, clock spots, where you go in, like, a little circle. Everyone gets in their clock spots. Like, it, it's sort of like a hive mind thing, but it it's very fun when you get that sense of teamwork, like you're zoning in to teamwork. Like, yeah. You're trusting your team. Like, if you, literally, if they call out the wrong thing, you lose. Like, exactly. you have to do it all over again. And some of these things take forever to do again. 
you get this one thing wrong, you do the entire thing again, and it sucks. But you trust your teammates to call out the right thing. You do it, not even thinking if it is the right thing and uh, hoping that it is the right thing. Plus, if you build friendships and stuff, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, it, messing up becomes more of a fun thing. Mm, yeah. And, like a fun learning thing, but also it's just fun instead of, oh, crap, we lost. Okay, I'm, I kind of don't want to do this anymore. Honestly, the uh, one of the best parts of playing with your friends and building that teamwork is also just getting on them for doing literally anything. Exactly. Like, yeah. like our friend John, right? He's not uh, a dumb John. person, all right? Um, he's he's not dumb, but he has some of the most oblivious, like visual whatevers I've ever seen in it's a person. It's like an this, awareness thing. I don't even think he does it on purpose too, which is the funniest part. You tell like this, the, you'll tell this man, all right? The guy is over there. He'll be like, oh. Okay, five seconds later, oh my god, why is the guy over here? I just told you the guy is over there, you absolute buffoon, it's now like you're dead, and now we're down of guy. Ryan, him and Ryan have, like, this curse where whenever Ryan's almost dead in Overwatch, John, like Lucio, he has an alt where he can, like, increase their health, always uses it right when Ryan dies, and Ryan gets so mad, it's hilarious. <laughs> but um, the cooperative aspect, I remember one game in particular, Labyrinthine, which me, Tyler, mm. Kyle, and Ryan actually just played, which was so unbelievably fun for some reason. Like, this little indie horror game. And we're just going around trying to, like, solve puzzles and trying to, like, avoid monsters. And it's just, like, Kyle carrying us the whole time and kind of, like, being the leader of the group. And it's just me, Tyler, and Ryan trading who dies the most each level. Like, in level four, I kept on dying to, like, this, like, ogre that we dubbed the Gerber Baby. And it was <laughs> absolutely great. It was the one of the funnest times I've had. And with the fact that the game also had proximity chat, so you, you just hear someone screaming and you're running away like, oh, God, the Gerber <laughs> baby coming. No, no, not the Gerber okay. baby. Not uh, to sell this thing short, but we did hear the bell. And I, yeah. I, I want to leave it, leave this on one question that I really liked from the last one. What makes a game awesome? And you saying that made me realize, I think a follow the leader and like being in the leader position role, those are what makes games very fun. And look like awesome and everything. I actually think to an extent I agree with Sam in the sense that for me what makes a game like super fun for me is like the world building, right? It's like where if you can get immersed in whatever you're playing, like if they tell a story and tell it good enough to where you want to keep on playing that game, like something I think of as inscription. Mm. Like uh, I didn't really play much indie like uh, horror games or card games or anything like that, but when I first got into inscription, I was just so visually interesting to me and, like, the lore behind why you got into the cabin in the first place and who the uh, car dealer actually is. That was so captivating to me. Plus, I love when games take a basic idea, mm, build yes. it themselves, and then add in just random stuff like the hammer, the, the pliers and yeah. stuff. You got anything, Jack? Um, like I said with Destiny, I really like the build crafting, but I like outsmarting people, like... Like, all these tools out in front of you, and you make the coolest thing. And then friends is another huge thing, the community and all that. Uh, I think that really brings it all together and uh, makes it so you can keep playing this game over and over again. Yeah, and then a bi another big one would be just personal, like, strive just to get better at whatever game you're playing. Like the Games that can let you get yeah, better. Yeah. Like TF2, you can play for out hundreds of hours and still not hit a headshot for the <laughs> for the life of you but you know it's the it's the drive that counts or in minecraft you just get better at just building or just progress in general or just watching your friends die to a random skeleton on easy mode because yes yeah <laughs> yes i'm gonna keep dogging on isaac because it's funny but that's gonna be it for today we do have to wrap things up here but uh thank you guys for joining us for this episode of the podcast with no name and we'll see you next time. The podcast. And next where finish we have Randy's three alumni, pass. one person in the class. To finish Randy's past statement, we've got to catch them all. <laughs> Pokemon. Okay.